Hello, welcome back to Let's Play CrossCode, and I know what I need to do now in that last stage. If I can pull it off is an entirely different matter. But here we go. Let's have some risotto. And you can tell I learned how to say it in Japan. Okay. Uh, I probably say it wrong even for them. There. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Superhero landing or supervillain landing. And then I pile into you. Because I don't want you doing anything. Okay, where is your thing going to be? Okay, you need to go down. Took me too long to figure out the diagonal block. <sighs> I'm going to be late. Everybody's going to be there before me. They're going to be. Yeah. Ooh, there's Emily. Haha, <laughs> I won. Where's Citron? That final part was pretty intense, wasn't it? I'm second! Last one again. And I thought you'd do well since you figured out the puzzles so quickly. Well, I had a pretty hard time the last section. Too many of those enemies. Yeah, that was like quite something, wasn't it? Hello, the space bird is waiting. I probably shouldn't be drinking while I'm on while the microphone is on. Sorry about that. Especially since I've heard recently how weird my breathing sounds on this new mic. A little spark can grant life to any creature of this world. Yet a most furious thunder will humble those creatures in awe. Among the fiercest of lightning you stay persistent. With calm and calculated waves you phase through electric discord. You, the traveler, the envoy of change, you have proven yourself worthy. Take the shade, one of a pair, to reach the grand tree. Purple bolt shade obtained. Let every step form the path of your growth. Congratulations, Seeker. You collected the purple bolt shade, one of the two shades required to enter the grand Chris Kajo. Now that you've collected both of the shades, it is time to take on the final challenge of Gaia's Garden. Take this reward for your accomplishments. Circuit override. Good luck and stay vigilant. I haven't used any of the circuit overrides. I wonder sometimes if I'm and done. So that means we're finally ready for that grand something dungeon, right? Awesome. This place is here's pretty nice, don't you think? I'd like to have a small look around before we continue. Sure. Though I have to admit that huge electric stream up there makes me slightly nervous. Let's look at the 
Moscone, the creator of ever-flowing waters and twin brother Quinn, was busy filling our planet with oceans and lakes. The water overflowing from the lakes was slowly moving down the hills into the ocean. However, the water in the oceans was almost motionless. As Quinn watched those boring, calm waters, she had an idea. She created light winds flying over the ocean, creating an abundance of dancing waves on its surface. But at first, Goni didn't like, did not like this change, as he preferred his waters calm and quiet. But as he saw creatures playing with the waves and used, using the winds to travel across the oceans, he reluctantly agreed to keep it. This made Quinn very enthusiastic, so she decided to create stronger and stronger winds, making the waves go higher and higher. This led to the most fearsome storms and tidal waves floating vast amounts of land. Goni quickly interfered. Quinn understood that she made a terrible mistake. To make it up to her twin brother, she created many creatures to live deep within the waters. When Diaro and Dorvis witnessed the advancements of our kind, they decided to send the message of the sky wrapped in the envelope of solid rock and ice. As he sent out the envelope, Diaro was ever so careful in only giving it a, the slightest nudge. After all, he didn't want his creation, the earth and mountains, to be damaged when the message arrived. Quinn watched the envelope fly towards us ever so slowly. She watched and watched, growing more and more impatient. She knew that Diaro wanted to be careful, but if this continued, the message would never arrive in time. Quinn then remembered how our kind could withstand her most powerful thunderstorms and fierce hurricanes. She was confident that we could receive a fast approaching message as well. Without hesitation, Quinn reached back and gave the envelope a massive blow, launching it toward us at high speed. It is thanks to her confidence in our resilience that our kind received the message of the sky in time. It all started with Diorbis, the ethereal god of creation, was born into the emptiness of the void. After pondering for eons in solitude, his desire for company gave birth to the gods of shape. Quinn is one of these gods, born to a twin to Goni. He, she is the god of the Pentagon and the creator of storms and lightning. Quinn is the creator of storms and lightning. Her strong winds keep our world in constant motion. Her fierce thunderstorms are awe-inspiring, sparking curiosity within us. Finally, her little sparks also give life to every creature of this world. Huh, did I look at the ones of the other? Where am I? Oh, there is sadly no... Hmm. That goes down. Those ancients are sure know how to be flashy. Yeah. Here we go. I just saw someone pop up playing Werewolf the Apocalypse. Okay, cool. What's this? Wait, something is coming from down there. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Not the bird people again. Seeker! Hi. I'm so sorry I could not stop them. Why? The Wiccats, they're back already. Some of my people have been a cat attacked, and now they're hell-bent on shutting down the power plant for real. Hey, Tara, it's been a while. You brought a lot of company as well, Dr. Gretchen. Lou, we are in trouble. Let me guess, the cats are back? Yes, how do you know? Well, we got them too, right at the power plant. That's terrible. No, that's perfect. I've got them right where I want them. This is the perfect opportunity to research the heck out of these buggers, to determine their source, their actual reason for their existence. Spoilers, it won't be the power plant. I wish I had your confidence. Oh, I don't need confidence, I have science. Anyway, Tara, please try to keep your folks calm. I can't have them char charge the power plant for the time being. I'll try my best. Seeker! You have experience in dealing with those Wiccats, correct? Great, follow me this way, I need your assistance ASAP. Okay. Katara. Yeah, she's the kind that takes your assistance for granted. Still, this might be our only chance to resolve this conflict peaceably. Peacefully, let's all work together. Nods. Looks like we have to solve another little quest before entering the last dungeon. Wee oui, wee. Oui. It would have been too easy otherwise, I guess. 
did I already go to look at the stuff around the statue of the other temple? I should do that at some point. Oh, there they are. Please ignore them for now. We'll deal with those in a bit. To my office. Make yourself comfortable, Seeker. This may take a while. Oh no, do we have a power point? We know that the power plant isn't causing this problem. You know why? Why? Because the jungle was already infested when we started building the plant. The Shad here seemed to forget about that, but I understand their frustration. Also, these cats, they attack on sight. Normally, subtops, subtypes of the same family follow the same patterns, meaning they should behave like show cats, but they don't. That got me thinking, where have I seen this before? Well, the Bergen Mine, of course. The track itself spawned these little bug bugs that took over our machinery and integrated it into its temple. So maybe the same thing is happening here. Something is controlling those cats and making them so hostile. I studied those bugs for quite a while, you know, fascinating technology. They use special frequency and impulses to override systems. Obviously, I extracted both the frequency and the semi-magnetic impulse rate. Where is it? Ah, there you are. Undone. That was easier than I expected. Everything's ready. Let's head outside for the field experiment. Oh. Wish they get, they had Trani and um, Citron and Emilia also taking a, a chance to sit down. Good. First step. Let's get rid of the cats and their source. You know how to deal with those, right? Guards, the barrier, please. Good luck. So much data. Come back to me, speak Seeker. What do you say? Good luck, Seeker. Perfect. I took some measurements and things are behaving exactly as I expected. You see, you might think the Wiccats and their source are already defeated. In fact, we only scratched the surface of the problem. Next step, take this device. Fair device. How? I call this the Frequency and Impulse Rattler, or the Fair. The device is able to disrupt a rather large field around you. Anything that uses the same frequency should be get picked up by this device. And if my calculations are correct, you should be able to see the real source of the problem. So go ahead, please. See, I knew it. We just uncovered another hidden part of the tracks working. These poles must be the true source, controlling and spawning the cats over time. Now that we can see them, we should be able to remove them. Go ahead, Seeker, but be careful. Those poles are the real thing. They might behave differently. Okay, same thing. Dungeon time it is. See you soon. Wait, what? Is is this supposed to be? Oh yeah. Like it's not over yet. You have a weird sort of smile on your face for the situation. There we 
go. Come back here, Seeker. That was quite educational. Who would have thought the track could hide these holes in plain sight? And it seems they form a kind of train stretching out over a larger area. This mechanism feels somewhat familiar, though I can't put my finger on what it does exactly. I need more data, Seeker. Um... That surprised even me. This pole here pointed downwards, right? So it means there are maybe more of these? Maybe they re lead to a kind of route from which all these poles originate? In which case, you must find it. Please come back and report your findings once you do. Okay? Great, I'll be in my office again, pondering on what we found so far. South. Okay, so is there any other way south here? Nope. Hmm. Reminds me. Not that. I'm waiting for fours, I think. Oh, no, I could do that. Can't do that. That could be useful. I'm waiting for that or that. One of those two. So. The max HP stuff. Head south. Highly advanced society. Super tech space travelers. Use glaives. Well, who knows? I mean. Uh, laser swords. Where am I supposed to? The root cause. Trails south of... Huh. I'm trying to. I don't. Ha I haven't seen the other poles. Oh, hello. of the characters I am. Oh no, elemental overload. I need to improve my balance. Increase my hit points regeneration. You went this way. Get him to the infested areas. Oh, you're not attacking. I didn't hit you. You're being cuddly. Got it. Do not hit the cuddly show cats. Someone needs a lesson here. I like the healing I got out of uh, 
Okay, up we go. And of course, we're kind of semi instanced because nobody else has probably seen what we're seeing. All the, the people running through, they're just seeing their own thing. Kind of like in Lord of the Rings, where, you know, if you're not on the same quest line as somebody else, you might not see the town burning. Lord of the Rings Online, I mean. Okay, where is. The Hmm, getting kind of hungry for mushrooms. Really, those huge blue and purple mushrooms make you hungry? Why not? Don't you folks eat cheese with blue mold and stuff like that? Oh, hold up. Let's not fall back to stereotypes here. But we, Roquefort, is pretty neat sometimes. Okay. Where is our... There you are. Could already tell. We didn't ask for this battle, did we? Well, we got asked to do this battle, and this is the thing we're tracking down. So kind of, yes, kind of no. I mean, they do attack us on side. But on the other hand... be another period of uh, doing side quests a little bit different because I'm going to try to complete some things that I've been let see for a while, like the broken gauntlet stuff. Marshes is what they said? Let's see. First of all, it is time for a new video. So we are going to go ahead to the... Okay, the Infested Marshes. Uh, north of Infested Marshes South. But that's for the next video. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye.